let me just start this up right quick. Okay, can, wow, I'm having a, there we go. Can you guys see that PowerPoint? I can't see you guys now, so. Yes, we, we can. Yes, okay, we can. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I put you guys in the in the up and down gallery mode and then I the, the top three people are off. That's okay. Okay, so um, welcome. Thanks for uh, spending your Friday afternoon with us and uh, we won't take up the whole afternoon. Um, but we appreciate you coming here and learning more about what we've been working on at BioRad to help you guys adapt to this. Um, I sound like one of those cliched emails, I apologize, this challenging time that we're all going through. Um, my name is Lee Brown and I'm a curriculum and training specialist for BioRad. Uh, I'm here with my partner in crime today, Tamika, who is, um, hey, uh, she, uh, she, we split the country into thirds. And so Tamika works with mostly the East Coast. I'm mostly in Central. And um, Damon, who's not on this call, is on the West Coast. Um, I'm sure that most of you people, or who, most of you who are on this call may have worked with one of the three of us before. Uh, we also have Yolanda on the call too, and she'll be helping out answering questions in the chat. Uh, she is our guru for the web and has been really instrumental in putting together um, these resources and making sure they get online for you guys. Uh, so if you have any questions, any of us are happy to answer those for you. Um, and uh, you're welcome to contact us afterwards. So here's our email that is just kind of our generic email address that you can, you know, reach out if you have questions afterwards. I believe Heather's going to be sending around a survey. And so we um, can also send you a, uh, a zip drive or a, a download link that has all the resources that we're giving you today. We don't have quite all of them up online. We have a lot of them online. I'll be showing you those and how to download them. But we're going to try to send you guys an email that has kind of all this bundled together uh, so that you have it already downloaded in one click. Um, so we'll do that if that's okay with you guys. Um, and we might also send a little, uh, a few questions in the survey that Heather sends as well, just asking for feedback on um, whether these resources are helpful and also what other resources you'd like to see from us. And I'm hoping we have time to discuss. So uh, my role and Tamika's role as well, just uh, in case we haven't met before, is to normally we're in person doing training. And so this is a weird time for us as well. We're doing all of our trainings like this. Um, a lot of you are probably teaching online like this as well. Uh, we do a lot of phone calls and emails. But we are here for resources, even if it's not related to social distance learning or whatever weirdness is going on this semester. If you have questions in particular about biotech labs or how they might fit into your classroom or um, you're having trouble with a lab or you think you messed something up, um, give us a call. Sometimes we have to call tech support. We, we rely heavily on our tech support gurus because they are, they're brilliant. Um, but oftentimes it's something that we can kind of help you work through too. So please feel free to reach out to Tamika and I or Damon. Um, you can use this email address to find any of us. We'll, we'll get you to the right spot and um, we can help hold your, lap, hold your hand. Um, we're also really missing our time in front of students. We normally spend time in the classroom. And so if you want us to help you in your class, do a guest presentation, we could talk about careers or labs or whatever, um, you can reach out for that as well. And depending on our schedule, we'd love to help uh, fit you in that way. Okay, so what we're gonna talk about today, we're going to, um, I, first of all, I'd like to hear from you guys what your current, current course situation looks like. What do your classes look like this fall? From there, we'll talk about some of the ways that we've adapted our labs to fit what this new version of class might look like if you're in school. You know, some of you might have smaller groups, some of you may not be doing any hands-on wet labs. Um, we also have some options for those of you who are not doing any face-to-face -face teaching and your students are at home. Um, whether those are wet labs that they can do at home or uh, digital activities. And then finally, I'll show you the other resources that we have that are, you know, really adaptable for either in school or at home learning. So some other digital resources, videos, things like that, um, that your students can do um, uh, with you or just by themselves, okay? So, and then we'll have some time, of course, for questions and answers. Feel free to unmute yourself and ask me questions um, just as needed. So, you know, also if you wanted to put stuff in the chat, you can do that too. And uh, I, I know you guys have all used Zoom enough to know that it's kind of hard to like monitor the chat and do the presentation. But Yolanda can interrupt me if there's something that we need to talk about as a group or if you have a question that 
um, you think other people would benefit from, just don't hesitate to unmute and ask. Okay, so I'm gonna show you guys a few quick little Zoom tool things. And this is something that I learned in one of our trainings um, on how to use the annotate function. Some of you might already be doing this, so I apologize if it's old hat to you, but it was new to me and I thought it was worth showing you. So you should see something, um, I made Yolanda do this with me yesterday. You should see something on your screen that looks like this. You're viewing Lee's lab screen and you see the view options. If you go down there, you can choose annotate. Um, so go ahead and do that now if you don't mind. Let me know if you're having trouble finding it. Okay. And then from the annotate menu, you have all these cool little tools. Okay. And this is how we're going to do a poll in here. Um, the polls are kind of wonky in Zoom. I mean, they're, they're doable, but they're not great. Um, so this is a kind of a nice way to do a poll. If you want to, you could use a stamp function and you can just click on my screen or on your screen, obviously, not on, it'd be hard to click on my screen, social distancing and all that. Um, but click on your screen, it'll, it'll add things there. Y'all are doing it great. You can change the color over there under format. Um, you can actually use the text tool to type out a response if you wanted to. The arrow one is kind of nice because the arrow just automatically puts your name. So it's like a little label, like a little page label with your name on it. So you can try that. I'll, I'll go to the next page here and uh, you guys can try that. Go ahead and just have fun with it. Yeah, you can draw stuff. <laughs> I don't know anyone that is a good mouse drawer, but awesome. Okay, great, great, great. I love it. Okay, so if you wanted your students to use this, they could do this and it would be anonymous. You know, you don't really know who's a heart or a check mark or whatever. Or if you wanted them to um, use their names, they could use that arrow and it would just automatically slap that on there, which is really nice. They can have text conversations. It kind of gives you a way to do a whiteboard with a pretty easy way. Um, just so you know, as a teacher, uh, these all, can you see how they're still there even when I change my slide? Um, I have to go to the annotate thing and hit clear and I can clear uh, either all drawings, I can clear just the ones that I made, or I can clear all of yours. Okay, so I'm just gonna clear everyone's, right? Um, the other thing that you'll notice is, uh, and some of you may have already noticed this, if you click anywhere again um, and you have one of these selected, it will still keep doing that until you click the mouse tool. So you have to click the mouse tool, whoops, let me see. Yes, I am currently not clicking the mouse tool. There we go. That one, and that will make it so it doesn't add stamps to everything. Okay, so if you wanted to click on your screen while we were presenting or whatever, um, you would need to hit the mouse tool to get out of that annotate mode. Okay, cool. All right, so we're gonna use that <laughs> to do a quick poll. So thinking about your classes for the fall semester, how do they look? Are you doing, and you can use the annotate tool or the arrow, whatever you wanna do here is fine. Are you doing in-person classes with like lab groups of three to four students, which is kind of typical for a lot of high school community college classes? Are you doing in-class where you have smaller groups, maybe one person or maybe only two people? Are you doing in-class with virtual labs or no labs? Um, digital, you know, you guys can read it there. Okay, not many in-class right now, huh? <laughs> I like it. Okay, so it looks like a lot of online and some of you are doing where students can do some of the labs at home. Um, some hybrid. Um, I know some of the high school teachers I work with are doing uh, where, their teacher, where their students are coming a couple of days a week and at home a couple of days a week. And so, you know, it's different than last year for sure, but it's kind of that mix. Okay. Wonderful, so this is great. I was hoping we'd have kind of a good mix like this. So we'll try to kind of, um, I'm actually gonna take a screenshot of that so I can see, or actually, Yolanda, do you mind taking a screenshot or Tamika? Sure, will do. Thank you. Hold on before you, before you move that. Yeah, 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 let me know when you're done. <laughs> Cause I'll have to clear them before I go on or else we'll have all these wonderful check marks everywhere. Oh gosh, yes. All right, done. Thank you. Okay, great. All right, so I'm going to clear all drawings. Okay, terrific. Uh, one so. person 
phone, so can't annotate. But What's no, that? I'm sorry. One person is on a phone, so can't annotate, but you feel free to um, just write it into the chat if you can. Yep, yep, that'd be great. The yep. other thing I was going to mention uh, is there's an option, and now I can't find it. It's, there's an option to do the raise hands and things too. Um, and I don't have the same view you guys do, but if you want to use that instead of unmute, you can do that as well. So either way, we don't have a ton of people. So I think unmuting is probably the easiest thing to do at this point. Okay, so uh, let me go back to um, clear all drawings, mouse, and here we go. So we have some different links here uh, and I'll show you guys where these are. This PowerPoint is, um, basically just a list of links and other resources. It's not all that useful for you guys. What we'll do is we'll just send you the actual resources yourself. Um, so, I mean, you can have this PowerPoint too. It's just, you know, not all that, nothing is embedded in the PowerPoint really. Um, we have a, 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 an overview Excel spreadsheet PDF of all of the lab adaptations for socially distant classrooms and also at home labs. We've kind of combined it into one document. Um, we also have a landing page that just has all of our classroom resources listed. So videos, bioinformatics modules, paper models, case studies, um, PowerPoints, all that kind of stuff, all the resources that you might need to go along with our labs. Um, or even, you know, you don't have to have our labs to do a lot of them. Some of them, like a case study, you wouldn't necessarily need the lab to go along with it. So it might just fit into curriculum really nicely. Um, we have YouTube playlists that show you how to do biotechnology techniques. I know a lot of you have used these already. I'll show you what those look like. And in addition to that, we have a YouTube playlist that is not our specific, they're, they're not videos that we created, but they're videos that we've compiled into playlists that we think would be useful for you to use as a teacher. So ones that we found really useful when we were presenting workshops or writing manuals um, and that we recommend to teachers all the time. We always love hearing your favorite links as well. That's how a lot of these came together is um, teachers on our Zoom calls will be like, oh my gosh, so you guys see this really great, you know, student singing about the cell or whatever. Um, and so they wind up on that playlist too. So we've tried to compile all those. So let me just show you where some of those are. Um, I'm going to need to change my sharing here. Give me one second. Okay. Okay. So our, um, when you, let me close my annotate screen. So when you go to birad.com slash education, um, or if you click on this life science education here, uh, we have all of the, it looks a little bit different. Yolanda just worked on this all, all summer, well not all summer, but a good, a, a good, a good bit of it. Um, we have a lot of our um, most popular kits or, or segments of kits kind of front and center right here now. Um, and we have the textbook right here. If you need a copy of our textbook and you don't already have one, let me know. Uh, you can send that email. Uh, you can send an email to explorer at bioride.com and we will make sure that you get a 60 day trial of our digital version of the textbook. Um, or if you need the hardback cover, we can work with that as well. The hard, the hard cover, if that's what your students would do, um, then let me know. Um, if you scroll down here, if you ever need to contact us or tech support or um, you have a sales question, you can contact this. There's a form. But I want to show you this link right here, Classroom Resources. And you can also get to this just by going to bioride.com slash classroom resources. Um, so this is a really great, honestly, I have this just as like my homepage now because I use it so much. Um, but this is a really nice uh, landing page for all of our resources that relate to kids. So if, um, you know, you're doing TGLO, here's the video, um, here's the plasmid map, and, you know, you can go to that page as well. Um, they're broken out at the top, so there's a menu across the top here that you can use, or you can just scroll down and see those all there. So our CRISPR one is right here. Okay, we'll get into some of these models um, and some of these other activities a little bit later, but I just wanted to show you that for now. Okay, um, so the other thing I wanted to show you is we have our um, solutions for socially distanced classrooms. Okay, so that's right up here at the top. It's also on a lot of our product pages as well. And when you click on that link, it will download, I've already got downloads, so I'll just show you this. It will download a spreadsheet that looks like this. This is a lot of information. I'm gonna zoom in so you guys can see it. 
So if you'll notice here, we have it by broken out by kit. And then I'm just going to scroll down to genetic engineering because I know you guys are all familiar with Pete Lowe, for example. Haley, we can't huh? see it. I don't think we're oh. gonna, I, we, we just see the classroom resources page. Oh, you're right. I apologize. Thank you. Uh huh. In Adobe, it's not in. Now you should be able to see it. There's a quick question about any videos for the biofuel enzyme kit. I don't think there are. No, but we are working on that. You're right. We don't have one. Okay. Can you see it now? Yep. Awesome. Thank you. Okay. So um, this is broken down by kit. I'm just going to zoom in. Whoop, that's too much. Okay. I'm just going to scroll down to PGLO so you guys can see what it is. So if you look here, we've got um, the kit. If you, you can click on it, it'll go to the actual PGLO page. And the price, whether it is suitable for at home, uh, I'm sorry, this is in school, socially distanced classrooms or at home. Um, our bacteria kits, we do not recommend doing at home. It's actually against a lot of districts policies for students to work with bacteria at home. And we just can't, we can't be sure that they're disposing of things the right way, bleaching them and all that stuff. So we don't recommend it, um, which is why we have just, you know, a, a dash there for the bacterial kits. Um, we do have these modified, the way that we modified these labs is we um, basically stuck with one box, the components in one full box, not the refills, just one full kit box. What's the maximum number of workstations you, should, you could get out of there and still be successful doing the lab, right? Um, so this is not necessarily a one-size-fits-all solution. It's kind of meant to give you a start in thinking about what you could do. Um, it's I think for for us, you know, as Tamika and Yolanda and I were thinking about these, um, there's a lot of weird math. I'm sure if you've ever tried to do this by yourself, it's 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 a lot to think about, right? Like how much, what volume is in that vial? How much do the students really need? If we don't overfill it, can we go back to, you know, instead of giving them 25 microliters, can we do 20? Those are all the kinds of things that we talked about. Um, what's the limiting reagent? You know, do they have enough plasma but not enough tubes, for example? So those are all the questions that we asked as we were doing this. Now, that doesn't mean that um, you can stretch it more if you had other supplies. We just kind of stuck with what was the, what we expected was, was kind of reasonable for most teachers, okay? Um, so if you have other questions, I'm gonna show you some of these and what they look like, but you know, you'll see that there's probably things that you could do a little bit differently um, that might stretch it further, or you might not like how we, parceled things out among the different groups. And so you might wanna have each student having more experience than what we already have. Um, and that's totally fine. This is just meant to be a starting place, okay? So we have with uh, a lot of these, with the standard protocol, what, what the, the normal usual one in the kit, it normally serves eight students. With our modified protocol, you can serve up to 24 students or 24 groups if you're working with groups of students still, okay? Um, there's an overview of the lab in the middle here. And then the modification is right over here. So to extend the number of workstations, what would you wanna do? Um, and then there's some caveats over here on the far right. So for example, you might need to purchase um, more tubes or uh, instead of each student doing four or each group doing four you know, samples, they are only handling one each and they need to combine their results. Okay, so things like that are mentioned as well. So does that make sense to everyone? I'm gonna go over one of these in greater detail so you can see it. But let me know if there's any questions. I'm gonna pop into the chat right quick. Okay, all right, awesome, awesome. Okay, great. So let me get out of here and I'm going to share my screen again. And we're going to go to the PowerPoint. Share, there we go, okay. Okay, so as we're thinking about how we would adapt these kits for in-school adaptations, right? So how can we make these more flexible to handle what we're dealing with? A lot of you guys are probably dealing with, um, you know, students aren't allowed to, you know, they each need their own lab station, for example, or maybe you have smaller classes. Um, how, and that might mean that you might have more frequent classes, right? Um, so how would this, work necessarily. So again, our goal was to maximize the number of workstations that you could get from just one kit. Um, 
if you had, you know, you guys can think of uh, an example like a DNA electrophoresis lab where traditionally a student group might load six samples. Um, there's different ways to do that with individual workstations. You could have every person just load one sample and they could combine their results. Um, you could have them, you know, loading, um, you could buy multiple kits and everyone could be one, one group um, that loads all five. So there's lots of different ways to do this, but in general, we kind of went towards the method of having um, smaller or individual groups that had fewer samples, right? For, for a lot of them, not always true of all of them. For some of them, you might need things like extra 15 mil conical tubes or um, disposable pipettes. We've got some promos at the end that I'll show you where we've tried to either include those for free with purchase of a kit or offer a steep discount of them on them. Um, and in some of these, they'll just have to share equipment. There's, you know, unless you aren't or are willing to buy a whole set of micro pipettes for each student, um, we kind of assume that there would be some sharing of equipment. You guys are probably, um, a lot of you are teaching biotech, a lot of you require PPE anyway, and they're already working with gloves. Um, so that'll just be up at, you know, at your discretion and your school's policies, what they can share, what kinds of um, wipe downs or any other precautions they need to take between shared equipment, um, things like that. Um, we've also kind of thought in, in, you know, just again, talking amongst ourselves about ways that you could make it a little bit easier um, by aliquoting solutions instead of giving them one tube that they then aliquot out, right? And they'd have to pass that along. So um, oftentimes these labs will require the teacher to aliquot more upfront, which is kind of a bummer, um, but it prevents them from having to share as many supplies. Any questions about any of this? Okay, so let me go to the next one here. So if you guys want to hit the annotate button again, and then is there one of these in particular that you'd like to see kind of an up close and personal example of? I've got all of these pulled up so we can easily switch to any of them. But if there's one in particular that you guys wanted to look at, and we'll send all of these to you. But I would just want to pick one that we could go through and um, talk about. So go ahead and place your votes and then we'll, we'll go from there. Getting a lot for biofuels, nice. I'll give you all another, another 20 seconds or so, just in case we have some slow annotators. And some of these we can look at the at home, you know, there's a lot of duplication between at home and um, in person, so if we don't pick your favorite this time. All right, I think I'm gonna go with biofuels for this one. So let me make sure I have that pulled up over here. I do, so let me share that one. Um, okay, biofuels, share. Okay. So hopefully, can you guys all see biofuels now? Someone will have yes, to unmute. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, so again, let me show you where those are linked. So I'm gonna go back to our, shoot, now I'm gonna have to change back to the Chrome. Okay. All right, so here we are back at Chrome, uh, or back in the browser window, and if I'm just going back to the life science education page, and we're looking at labs. Um, you can find them different ways. I'm just going to show you one. Um, but this one's under enzymes. Okay. So you can look there. And I should have asked Yolanda this. Is it up on the biofuels one yet? It might not be quite up yet. No, it's a new one. Okay, it's a new one. So this one will be up shortly. I'm going to show you what it looks like on PGLO. So, because I know that one's up. So if we go to PGLO, um, if they're up on the website, we're in, we're in the process of uploading these this week and next week. So they should be up. Is that right, Yolanda? Yep. And then our plan is to put all these into a zip folder and send them to everyone afterward anyway. So. Right. So um, if you're on the website, though, and you see this little green bar right here, download instructions for modification, that's what I'm looking at right now. Okay. 
Uh, also, let me go back and share that um, the solutions thing. So also, if you click right here, that will take you to the PGLO page, right, if you're in that document. And so then you can download it from here as well. That's just a little shortcut if you're already starting from that document and you want to see the, the expanded directions, okay? So that big spreadsheet is meant to give you an overview, just a big picture look at, okay, I'm in a panic, I've got to teach labs, I, everyone has to be in their own workstation or I can only have two Macs, um, what am I gonna do? Um, that should help you kind of focus in and you know quickly look through that list. You can say, okay, I've got, I've got 18 kids in this one class, I need to figure out a lab that can serve you know, at least 18 students. Um, oh, okay, great, PGLO or Biofuels, Eliza will do that. Um, so then you can kind of read the, the, the general, you know, the big picture idea there. If you're familiar with the lab, you'll probably kind of get a sense of how you might change it even from that few sentences. But then the document that I'm about to show you now is how you would actually um, kind of adapt the protocol to fit it into your course. Okay, so let's look at that. So let me go back to biofuels. These are all in PowerPoint. They are editable. Um, for that reason, we have, we, we know, <laughs> I sound like, again, a broken record. I know, I know you guys are dying at all these emails. They're like, we know this is a time of transitions and a very difficult period. Um, but we know things are crazy right now and that you're juggling trying to do all this stuff and that kind of um, uh, just one solution isn't going to be the best fit for everyone. So we wanted to make you, uh, we wanted to make life a little bit easier. These are meant to be edited. You can share them with their, <laughs> yes, so solo bias. Um, you can share them with your uh, students or you can just pull the images out and put them into your own PowerPoint. Oop, hold on, my ear's falling out. Okay, can y'all hear me? Hopefully, hello, hello. Yes. Okay, thanks. <laughs> um, so the uh, the pictures and all these are meant are here for you guys to, to rearrange or modify as you want to. Okay, that's why we wanted to put them in PowerPoint. Um, you can always print this out as a PDF for your students if you wanted to give them this. It's really more teacher directed. This is more for your information. So if we're looking at something like biofuels, I'm going to just zoom in here. Um, let me go forward, zoom. And let's go 100%. Oh, what does that do? Nope, that's not what I want. I'm going to have to go. Why can't I go higher? That's interesting. Hmm. Lee, okay, you can well, try zooming at the bottom of the page too. Down here? Hold on, I've got to move you guys because you know how Zoom is. It takes over everywhere you're trying to actually be. Um, ah, thank you, thank you, yes. No, I'm on annotate, hang on. Let me clear everything, clear all drawings, mouse, and zoom. There we go, okay. Thank you. Okay, so is that zoomed in enough for you guys to see it now, hopefully? Okay, I'm gonna assume that's okay. Okay, so what you would do if you're doing biofuels with your classroom and, um, in the case of biofuels, the manual comes in the box or sometimes it comes in a separate box. Now I can't remember how biofuels comes. Anyway, when you order the kit, you get a manual. It may come in the box or it may come in another box that's the size of the kit box, but only has a manual in it. I'm sure you guys have dealt with that. Um, so uh, you have your biofuels manual. That's to prep it the usual way. If you've never done biofuels, just to give you an overview, what it is is an enzyme lab and students are looking at an enzyme that is found commonly in um, mushrooms and other things that break down cellulose. Um, the enzyme is called cellobiase. Um, it's an enzyme that breaks down uh, cellobiose, which is you know, two glucose molecules um, put together, okay, so a disaccharide. And um, students extract the cellobiase from the mushroom and then they just do a bunch of enzyme reactions with it. They test the reaction rate, they can test the effect of pH, temperature, in some concentration, substrate concentration. I feel like I'm leaving one out. Maybe that's it. Um, so there's already, in biofuels, there's a lot of materials already because it is designed for students to go through 
six activities. But normally all of our kits are designed for eight groups of four students each, typically. Um, now that's, you know, it depends on the kit. You've always been able to stretch some really easily, some not so much. Um, but with biofuels, it's meant to do, you know, you can do all of those reactions with the supplies in the kit. So let me just show you what that would look like here. Uh, so we did the one um, uh, that is just the plain biofuels kit. There's another one that's designed for AP biology. It's very similar. Um, I actually like that, that protocol because it does the mushroom one up front. Otherwise, it's very, very similar. Okay, so either of those would work um, in, in this way. So now I've got this one here. So, um, whoops, went too fast. So changes to this teacher instructions that will link you to the actual downloadable uh, manual, teacher manual. And then the student protocol here will go back to our website and link you to the student quick guide, okay? Um, some of our manuals, this is all in one now, so it just kind of depends on the kit how this looks, but we try to make it easy for you to find that. You will need to have them kind of side by side. Um, we thought for a while about trying to combine them all into one document. It's just, it's too much. It's, it was, <laughs> it's too much writing and repeating. So we tried to just give you the, the key parts and let you know where to slip those in. Um, Lee, can, says, I, uh, can I yes? uh, just correct something very quickly? So um, what you guys are seeing here, are um, the links right there take you directly to the slide that's applicable to the modification. I'm sorry, Tamika. Yes, I should click oh, on no, that. Oh, no, no, no. It's okay. It's, and, and it goes directly to the modifications page. The actual manual in and of itself, Lee, if you go to the second. There it is. There it is. You know, Thank you. will you. access the, the kid instructor manual. So I just wanted to make sure that was clarified. Thank you. Thanks Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. So if you click here, I'll just do that. I was scared to click it because I didn't want to go to the, um, to the website again. But if I control click here, it'll take me to the teacher instructions. Mm -hmm. And if I control click here, it'll take me to the student instructions. Okay. Um, and then this one, whoops. Um, this one right here, this one will take me to the website. Thank you for clarifying that. Okay, so this is where you're going to kind of start. So, um, sorry, hold on, I'm going to have to move this gallery view. Okay, there we go. Okay, so over on the right, we kind of put the big picture things over here, um, where you would typically do this. Um, this one's for the classroom. Um, you can do up to 36 stations. Right, or if you have multiple, you know, 36 would be a lot of students in one course. Um, you might have three classes and you could do 12 stations, right? So something like that. Um, it will give you ideas in here on the right side about what extra stuff you might need or just things to keep in mind. So in this case, the cuvettes need to be rinsed and, and reused. That's true of the kit anyway. If you're doing all six activities, you would normally redo that anyway. So just something to keep in mind. Um, we recommend some other things over here that are more specific to um, aliquoting or um, things that might be a little bit different from the regular procedure, okay? So if you think about, if you've ever done the, the biofuels kit before, um, the way that that typically goes is we have teachers encourage their students to bring in mushroom samples. And um, we try to encourage them to bring them from the grocery store because we don't want them accidentally bringing, um, you know, crazy mushrooms. So uh, they go and bring their mushrooms. They all have them, um, you know, they share them. Um, some teachers choose to get the mushrooms themselves and bring them in and they kind of have a little ecology discussion about this mushroom grows on the side of, you know, old growth um, uh, dead trees or this one was just growing in the middle of a field or this one's growing in cow manure, right? And so you can kind of tie the ecology to how much cellular bias activity those mushrooms have. It's kind of up to you how you do that. But um, they typically will be sharing mushrooms. Now that can present a, a, a problem if you're trying to keep your students farther apart. So what we recommended in this case is for teachers to go ahead and prepare mushroom extract so that they, the students aren't having to share the mushroom samples or go up and get close to each other. Um, they don't have to touch the same things. Um, you could do this as a demo in front of your students even if you wanted to. Right, so you could stand up there and show them how you're doing it. That would be fine too, or you can do it in advance. And so uh, you're you're doing the the mushroom extract. Um, you know, we have them uh, in the manual. We give you directions for doing it in a mortar and pestle, or in a um, a tube with a, a tip. You could even do it in a 15 mil tube with a chopstick. I've done that before as well. Okay. 
And um, once the teachers have, once you've made that, then you can aliquot that out for the students. And that way everyone has their own batch of mushroom extract. Now on step two, you're going to be aliquoting the solutions out for your students uh, for more groups than normally, than the, than the manual normally calls for. So in this case, we have them giving them um, one and a half millimeter substrate, three mils of that into 12 15 mil tubes, and they're gonna do the same for the stop solution. Um, you'll give them just a small tube of uh, a one and a half mil Eppendorf of um, uh, 350 microliters of mushroom extract and 500 microliters of extraction buffer and you could use a microtube for that or you could use a little cup whatever right um, and so then at the bottom here we've given you a visual representation of what the workstation would look like for each lab group whether that's one person or two people or whatever right and so you can kind of see this is the list of it here's a picture of it um, in this case, what this is showing is, uh, remember I said about the ecology, if you wanted to give them a um, habitat flashcard that shows, you know, this is where this mushroom is growing. So they can kind of tie that celibius activity back to the um, place where the mushroom was found, then that, that would give them that information as well. You could do that digitally if you wanted to as well. Um, so any questions on how this looks? This is kind of the teacher prep version. Okay. And in this one, the things that we added were the, um, I believe, Tamika, is this right, more microtubes if they wanted to use them for the extraction buffer, and then the, the small cup, um, or the small cup for the, right. is that right? To, um, to hold the extraction. We, we provide them or supply them with enough of the microtubes. And, and okay, great, great. So they actually don't need any more. Absolutely. And awesome. um, another one of the things that you might want to highlight or feature, um, because some of you may be looking and saying, well, what do we do with the purified enzyme that actually comes with the kit? Um, if you see there as well, um, uh, if you scroll up just a little bit, mm -hmm, later, mm -hmm. you could actually um, make the batches of enzymes that you know dilute them to a point where they may equate or correspond with a certain level um, of cellulose within those particular mushrooms. And I'm doing air quotes right now and say that that's from that particular mushroom. If in yes. fact you make sure that you have utilization for that enzyme, so you have a couple options here. So you can do you can perform the extraction and give them the real deal there, or you can modify it and tell them they have a real <laughs> deal. Yep, yep, exactly. Okay, that's great. Yeah. Perfect. And so, um, yeah, so that's kind of their, their setup here is what they're going to, what they're going to be using. Um, the pipettes in this case, we, yeah, in the kit, they come with sterile pipettes um, and they'll be re rinsing and reusing these if you're doing that many workstations. Okay. So here's what the student lab looks like. And I won't go through all this because it's, most of this is just going to be the same. I'm trying to think, is there anything in this one, Tamika, where it's, where it's significantly different? Uh, no, it just it just reflects the modified. Um, well, no, not even not even that. Um, in in this particular case, I think it's, these it's are the same thing. Are the are yeah. The same. Yep. yep. The, so this will look the same on the students' end. All right, right, right. Um, and, and I think the 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 main thing is uh, making sure that they're rinsing the pipettes. Some of you probably have that disposable pipettes coming out your ears. I know how that is. I we, I, I have that affliction myself. Um, so you can just have them trash them or um, dispose of them how you normally would. Um, the cuvettes can be rinsed and reused, and we have them rinsed and reused these normally, like I said, anyway. So any questions about how one of these protocols would go, or about this one in particular? All right, let me go back to my screen here. And we're going to flip back to this one. Share. Okay, so I'm going to come back to the. Oh, hold on. There we go. Okay, so that was an example of an in school one. Um, now, that one, if you'll notice, um, we did not recommend that one to do at home. And the reason is that um, it's really tricky to get the temperature uh, settings right on a lot of these. Like the mushroom extract is, is um, you know, the enzymes, a, excuse me, a little bit um, 
temperature sensitive. The substrate, I believe in this one is also temperature sensitive. So some labs just may work okay at home if you, if you trust your students to come and get it at school and immediately stick it in their freezer or their fridge or whatever. But in general, we try to avoid uh, suggesting that for labs where it was you know, more difficult. Um, so, um, but they could do this given the right, you know, the, the right setup. So, um, are there any ones that you guys, on this one, use your Antake tool and we can go through one more and look at how it might look at home. The photosynthesis one's super easy to do at home. That's one of my favorite ones. We've been doing that all summer. You have one more vote in the chat for the STEM. Okay. I can, I can show both. Let me do the photosynthesis one out and then I'll go and show you the STEM one. We don't actually have a one pager written at Bausch. You don't need one. It's already designed for that. So, okay. So let me go and share that PowerPoint. Um, yeah, do this one. Okay, great. Does it say photosynthesis and cellular respiration now? Hopefully. Yes, it does. Thank you. Okay, great. So, um, I know a lot of you teach biotech and you don't teach photosynthesis and cellular respiration, but some of you do double duty as a biology teacher. Um, and this is just a really great lab. It's also a great kind of chemistry lab too. Um, they're looking at algae beads and I don't have, I normally have a little thing of them and mine all dried up or I'd show you. They're the size of BBs and they are encapsulated in sodium alginate. They exchange gases with their environment and we provide them in a, a uh, we provide a CO2 indicator solution, which is really just a pH indicator. And so students are looking at designing an experiment where they can um, test whether their algae beads are doing more photosynthesis or more resp cellular respiration. And so trying to get them to understand that algae can do both, algae and plants can do both, right? Because it's also often a big misconception that plants only do photosynthesis and not cellular respiration. Um, so if these little algae beads are in the light, they will turn that CO2, that pH indicator purple um, because they're, it's shifted more towards photosynthesis. And um, in the dark, they'll be shifted towards cellular respiration and they'll turn that pH indicator yellow, okay? Because they're making um, CO2 combined with water, making carbonic acid and um, more acidic things make that pH indicator yellow, more basic ones make it purple. Okay, so that's kind of the big picture, right? So how would you do that at home? Well, this is a really super easy one to do at home. We have two versions of the kit. One of them's for AP biology and one of them is for general biology. Um, there's really no difference in the supplies in the kit except for the containers that you put the, the reagents in. So the AP biology one is designed for people who are going to use spectrophotometers, um, which is great. You can look at the uh, absorbance in the um, pH indicator in both of those conditions. They can look at it over time, right? So they can get kind of, we, in fact, Deb, we did this with, with, your, with your group and we used the um, Vernier, the app, which was awesome. And they could take five minute time point readings as they're doing it. Um, yeah, yeah, that if works really well. That's yeah. What we, that's what we use for class when we can meet. Yes. So uh, if you wanted to do that version, they're going to be using a spec, you would want to get the AP version. But if you're only going to look at something that they could do at home, they're not going to have a spec at home. So you might want to look at getting the general biology version, which is designed for them to have their own little baby tube, a little PCR tube of beads and indicator. So this again at the top kind of goes over the, the outline of what that lab is. The modification um, is um, down here. So um, there's an additional activity that teachers can do where they actually kind of dissolve that bead um, using a debeading solution that comes in the kit. Again, if you're teaching them at home, this is something that you could do on Zoom. I do this a lot where I have another little, like I have this little, this little guy, and I'll put my phone on here and just position that over my laptop or over my desktop so they can see what I'm doing and I'm facing them as well. So we just kind of switch back off um, back and forth. So you could do a demo like that at home if you wanted to show them how that looked 
Um, and if you have, you have USB microscopes, you can get them pretty cheap, under $200 on Amazon now. Um, but you could do that at home and show them. They also do an activity where they have a little cup of the CO2 indicator, which is red, and they blow in it. You guys might be familiar with this from doing it with bromophenol blue um, a long time ago. This is a pretty common experiment. So kind of the same thing, just showing them and having them think about what could be turning my solution from red to yellow. What am I, what's, what am I adding? So we wanted to hopefully come up with the idea that they're adding CO2. Um, so we want to give them a little bit of CO2 indicator. We want to give them algae beads and um, enough supplies to set their experiment, right? So there's different ways you can do this. We're just going to show you um, what we've come up with here. But if you have, you know, different needs, then let us know and we can help you out. Okay, so again, here's where you can click and get the link for the kit. Um, your last is a classroom or at home, actually, for this one. I, I think I might have actually accidentally done the, the, the at home one. It'll be very similar to this one. So sorry about that. I downloaded the wrong one. Um, you're going to make one workstation per student instead of giving um, one workstation per group of students, right? So the lab kit, the way it's designed, is enough for 80 students typically. Um, that's with students working in groups of four, so you might get, the, you know, two, two to three classrooms. Um, that means that there's actually a lot of, of tubes in there, okay? So here I'm just going to scroll down and show you what a workstation would look like. Um, so two PCR tubes fill with three of the algae beads and then just filled all the way up with CO2 indicator. You don't have to measure this two additional empty tubes, um, a small cup of five mil CO2 indicator. Now for, I, like I said, I accidentally downloaded the classroom one. For the at-home version of this, you would just put this in a 15 mil tube, okay? Uh, a disposable pipette. Um, this does not have to be sterile either. So, you know, you can use the ones um, that come in the kit. And if you run out, just use whatever you have laying around that's, you know, been rinsed. Um, they can provide a cup at home, just a small cup is fine. A Dixie cup or a medicine cup works. A shot glass if you're doing college students um, works great. It's small and clear. They'll need aluminum foil. You could send that home with them if you wanted to. Um, the indicator color guide, there are some available in the kit. There are also available online. You can choose to print those for them or you can just have them use it on their computer. The digital one works pretty well. And honestly, I've had to do that before when we didn't have um, enough. We just put it up on the board, on the projector, and it worked fine. So if you want to just give them the link that they could look at that, that would be fine too. Um, and then if you want to give them a Sharpie or just, you know, they need to have their own Sharpie, whatever. When Tamika and I have done this in the summer, what we tend to do is put, package all of this up into a Ziploc. And again, that, that beaker or that um, cup of CO2 indicator would, would be in the Ziploc as well. Everything is labeled the way that you want it to be labeled. Um, and they can come and pick it up. These guys are fine in their little PCR tubes. Um, you would just have them put the whole Ziploc, I would, in the fridge. And they'll be just fine in there for at least a couple of months. The typical expiration on an algae bee kit um, most of our kits are good for, we, we guarantee them for a full year. Algae bees, since they're a living organism, it's a little bit different. They don't, <laughs> they, they won't last a full year. Um, I've had some last a really long time, like they've surprised me sometimes, but we guarantee them for three months, okay? So this is a lab that you don't necessarily want to order the year before if you're not planning on doing it for until the next semester. Just order it, you know, if you can, just a little bit before. Um, there is a little bit of uh, the prep for this is really minimal on your end. You're basically diluting a 10x indicator to 1x and uh, getting it to this reddish orange color. And then the students, once they get them, the day before the lab, they'll need to put them under a, a light source. Like an LED light works really great. A desk light, if, if the desk light's a normal desk light height, you know, 12 inches from the desk and they just lay the algae beads and leave it on overnight, that's great. Um, but they'll wanna do that before the lab and then turn that light off before they start, okay? And so here is the, oh, I'm sorry. I just did not go down far enough. Here is the um, at-home one. So let me scroll down here. There we go. And yes, the other supply that they'll need to get at home is distilled water. Uh, so in your science lab um, or 
you know, if you're, if you're really lucky, you have distilled water that you get from the sink. Um, I typically have it in a gallon bucket. Students will not have access to distilled water, as you can imagine, so you'll want to give them some so that they can rinse their algae beads with um, something that doesn't have uh, chlorinated tap water, right? Okay, so that's about it. And then they'll just follow the directions as usual um, in, in the protocol. They've got everything that they need. Uh, they'll need to activate their beads. Um, you know, themselves, but otherwise they'll just follow through and do the protocol as um, mentioned in the manual. And for this one, we, um, there's two ways you can do it. You can give them the protocol or you can have them design their own experiment here. Okay, so that's really up to them. Any questions about how this would look in a, at, at home or in the classroom? All right, um, so let me go back here and I'm going to show you guys the, here we go, share. Okay, so am I back on that Eliza page now on the browser, I hope? Okay. Okay, great. So I'm just looking back at the classroom resources page and I wanted to go over some things that are not necessarily lab specific, but just some online resources. I know it can be overwhelming to do labs. Um, and so hopefully these little are ideas that can kind of fill in the gaps for you um, that you can give to students and they can work on on their own or as a, as a group, you guys can work on them together. So I just wanted to show you a few of those. Uh, if you see any others in here that you want me to, to look at, I'll be happy to show you those as well. So up at the top, Yolanda made this great PowerPoint on the biotechnology of virus detection. And so it kind of ties together a lot of the biotechnology tools that they might already be familiar with, with uh, COVID and, um, well, more broadly, just virus detection. But of course, it's, you know, it, it became really crucial when COVID came about. So that might be a good starting place to, or, or ending place to, to show your students the importance of what you're already teaching them and how that fits into the big picture of what we're looking at, researching and detecting, okay? Um, I'm gonna scroll down to ELISA. So here, again, case studies are here. These are two for um, PGLO. Um, CRISPR, if you haven't been to one of our CRISPR hands-on workshops, um, and you want to let me know because we're trying to organize those for the fall as well. Um, so CRISPR, we have a paper model activity where students are actually modeling Cas9. I'm going to show you what that one looks like right quick. Let me go to Adobe. So there, it's a paper model that they can cut out and look at how Cas9 um, and the, the single guide RNA work together to identify the target DNA and then cut it. And so if you scroll down here, we have kind of an overview of what that looks like. Oops, my cursor's not catching up with me. There's students, student questions here. Um, this is a, a, a little exercise in understanding the specificity of Cas9 and how it's, um, uh, so much more specific than say a restriction enzyme would be, right? So um, all these questions are again, student directed. Um, talk about homology directed repair right there and non-homologous enjoining. And then when they scroll down here is their paper model, okay? And this is the single guide RNA, here's Cas9. They cut them out and it overlays on top. Um, and then they're gonna just slide the DNA and they'll match up the green pieces, the um, NGG sequences with the PAM space on the, um, the PAM site on um, Cas9. And they can see where that target sequence of DNA is and exactly where it cuts. So that's kind of a nice activity for them to really go through and practice this and understand more fully how that uh, Cas9 and, and single guide RNA work, okay? Uh, another one that we have in there is, ooh, I hope I didn't download the wrong, I think I downloaded the same thing twice. I did, darn it. Um, I meant to download, we have a, bio, a bioinformatics activity where students can look at a disease um, and then they can do a blast search and find what they would design as a uh, single guide RNA to identify a specific target 
So that kind of ties in bioinformatics and with CRISPR and gene editing and helps them understand how scientists use Cas9 and that single guide RNA to specifically um, target specific genes that they're interested in and cut them. Okay, so those are two activities they are free. You don't need to buy the kit to, to get them. You can just go to that classroom resources page and download them and use them with your students. They're a nice complement to the kit though, uh, if you're doing the hands-on portion. And that kit is, um, if you haven't done it or you haven't, haven't had any experience with it, it's, it's awesome. Uh, it is a, students actually do CRISPR-Cas9 and edit bacteria in the classroom very safely. Um, they are uh, uh, editing the LAC-Z gene and they're making it non-functional. So they turn bacteria that would normally turn, would normally grow blue on IPTG XGAL plates. Um, when they add the plasmid, uh, they will cut and edit that gene so that they insert a stop code on so that it's no longer functional. Okay, so that's a really great way. Everything comes in the box, which is really nice. You don't need a bunch of extra stuff. Um, if you have an incubator, it's, it's the same kind of um, things that you need to do as PGLO. So the equipment that you need for PGLO is the same equipment that you would need for the out of the blue uh, CRISPR gene editing lab. But that's a really, really great one. Again, it's one that we recommend to do in the classroom. Um, that's a good one also for socially distanced classrooms because they can, normally we have a group of four doing four plates. Um, it's really easy to have every person in charge of their own plate. So there's four different transformations that happen. And so each student can do their own transformation. Then the students can all compile their data at the end. Okay, and then they can kind of see what happened. Um, there's three controls and then there's the experimental plate. Okay, so that's CRISPR gene editing. Uh, the ELISA one is another one that I wanted to show you guys. It's relatively new, so some of you may not have seen it. Um, this is available in a PDF or a PowerPoint. I've just pulled up the PDF here, so, but it's the same, same thing. This goes through ELISA and it's in the context of our paper models. So again, I'm gonna show you the, the last few slides. Here's the paper models. Um, in the PowerPoint version, we also have these cut out, quote unquote, digitally, so they can manipulate them digitally. Um, if you have students that like to uh, cut things out, then, Oops, I went too far there. There's the, the full size ones that they can cut out. And so what we're looking at here are antigens right here, these shapes right here. These are primary antibodies on this top row, secondary antibodies on the bottom row, and the substrate right over here, these little barbell things. And so uh, students can have those and they can kind of build um, their models as they're understanding what happens in an ELISA test. So we talk about antigen antibody activity, uh, uh, antigen antibody interactions and timelines. So when do you, when would you expect to find antigens? When would you expect to find antibodies? Um, why we need secondary antibodies, okay? Um, and they model that. And so this shows them how the pieces should fit together. It doesn't give them the answers um, because we assume that you can, you know, we want this to be ready for you guys to just give to them. Uh, if you need help with the answers, let us know. We'll, we'll, ha we'll be happy to help you out, um, but we don't wanna have them in here because you know, as soon as we put on the web, then it gets out there for the students. And so students basically walk through, this is an example one, so it walks through what's happening in each step of a ELISA. So um, they added the antigens here, they add the antibodies next, then they add the secondary antibodies, and finally they add the substrate. Okay, uh, and then they ask questions about what happened. And so kind of by answering those, they can understand that, you know, oh, well, we can see from the substrate here, um, you know, we get an amplification of signal, right? So that's something that we kind of try to elucidate from them um, as they're going through these questions. The next set is looking at this in the context of coronavirus and COVID. And um, these an links to animations are on there as well. Those are on our website. And so this is using what they just went through, they would kind of do the same thing only to detect antibodies. And so you can talk about this in, in the context of COVID. We do, do both antigen and antibody tests for COVID. Um, so you can talk about, you know, why that is, at what point in the, the infectious, infectious cycle you would, you know, it would be a, um, a relevant or, or, you know, perhaps not as accurate um, to use one or the other. Um, and that's, you know, hopefully a, a good intro or uh, you could do it instead of ELISA if you're not able to meet in the classroom or you could do it uh, along with your ELISA lab. 
um, our typical ELISA lab is designed for antigen detection or antibody detection. Um, if you need help with either of those, let Tamika or Damon or I know, and we're happy to help out. Um, we have a, the, 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 the activity that a lot of people really like is the sharing activity. Probably not recommended for a socially distanced classroom, even though it's a lot of fun. Um, so, you know, that's the antigen detection one. So you might want to stick with antibody detection and just pretend like the sharing's already happened, unfortunately. Um, and you're detecting patient, you know, antibodies in their samples. So any questions about that, Eliza? Mickey, did you mention the COVID protocol? Yes. So this one right up here? Yeah. Did you show them where, uh, where it was on the... Oh, on the website? Mm -hmm. Let me go back. Let me share this. Oops. Okay, are y'all seeing the, the, um, oh, I, I meant the, the new one that, um, that we just posted on the product page. Is it on Eliza? I didn't even know it was there. Yeah, you have to no, go to the no, product. There... Okay, hold on, hold on, let me get there then. The resources, um, by designer are not supposed to be selling, so we don't really link to products from those. Pages. Gotcha, okay. So, here we go. I didn't know it was up. That's great. Okay, Eliza, I'm here. Yep. And here, there we go. You can't miss it. Yep. So let me flip back. Um. Here it is. Okay, let me flip back here. So here's the PowerPoint. Awesome. Thank you. Okay. So this kind of walks them through how you would use the ELISA kit um, to actually teach COVID in your classroom, right? And so they, you know, the adaptations here are pretty minimal, um, but you're swapping in um, COVID-19 as the disease scenario. Um, it walks them through a scenario where they're looking to see if, if patients have been exposed to, to um, SARS-CoV-2 and they go through and just, this is a whole student protocol built in, right? Um, and so it kind of introduces these concepts as they're going through the lab, which is nice. This is normally how we do it in our workshops too. Okay. Awesome. Okay. Um, we have other things things on the website. I don't know if there's anything. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kind of stop here though because I don't want to overload you. Um, the last thing I want to show you is the YouTube videos just for those of you who don't know. I know a lot of you use them regularly. Um, but I'm going to go back here. So I'm just going to show you where to find them easily. If you scroll down to the bottom of that classroom resources page, you can, whoops. I'm sorry, we, we can't see, we, we are still with the- Thank COVID. you, thank you, thank you. It's very hard to flip back and forth and I have trained myself to not share my screen. So it's a, it's a double-edged sword. Okay, now, are you back in Chrome with me? Yes. Oh, yes. yes. Thank you, thank you. Okay, great. All right, so if you scroll down to the bottom, you can see these presentations and activities for workshops and teaching. That's where a lot of our workshop PowerPoints are. These video tutorials for the basic laboratory skills, these are really good. If you don't know, we have, I feel like a lot of you probably know we have these, but if you don't, you can find them here. Um, and these are, um, you know, anywhere from a couple of minutes to 10 or 12 minutes videos that walk them through things like how to use a micropipette, how to pour agarose gels, how to load a gel, uh, how to streak a plate, all kinds of biotechnology techniques, about 30 of them. Okay, so those are really there for you as a resource. You can use them. You know, I have new teachers that use these for prepping all the time or for them to understand or just refresh. You know, it's been, I haven't done that since college and that was, you know, a while ago. Um, they're really meant for you or your students to use and, and kind of help, help you see up close what's happening. So um, I often just mute them. We have them narrated, but I often just mute them and talk over them. Um, pause them and explain things. It's a good way for, for students to see in a real clear way what's happening. Uh, so those are our biotechnology technique videos that are there. The other thing that we have 
is, uh, again, down at the bottom of that page. Oh, darn it, I went to the wrong place. I've got this linked in the PowerPoint, but let me show you where to find it. Sorry, give me one second. So if you click on our playlist again, right here, we have these other playlists where these are just um, ones that are um, about different topics. Um, this CRISPR one's ones that, these are actually ones that we just did, but let me go back. I'm sorry, I'm looking in the wrong position. Down here, um, these explore video communities, that's what I was looking for. So if we look at the CRISPR gene editing playlist, these are just playlists playlist of videos that you guys and we have stumbled across on YouTube and we're like, oh, that's awesome, right? So we just kind of compiled them in a playlist. Um, so they're not ones that we've created. They're just ones that we think are cool. So if you have any that you want to add to these, please send us an email. We love to include those there. Um, we have ours up at the top, but then we have, you know, we have different um, Mayo Clinic, um, you know, the Mr. Sandman one for CRISPR. Um, we have a lot of Bozeman biology or Paul Anderson ones on here, TED Talks, all that kind of stuff. So those are a really nice place to start, especially if you're trying to do some digital resources for your students and you just don't have a good starting point. You may want to start there. We try to include HHMI and things like that as well. Okay. Um, let me go back to my PowerPoint and we'll be about done. Let's see. Where did I go? What is called? Huh, here it is, here it is, okay. This is the problem when you have 18 tabs open. Okay, great. So again, there's that link. Um, I'm happy to put it, or Yolanda, if you wanna put it in the chat so they can click on it, that would be great. And remember, we'll send you all this too. So if you don't want to, that's fine. And just so you know, we have some upcoming promos, like I talked about earlier, where if there's a lab that requires um, say some more 15 mil tubes or some, uh, you know, extra disposable pipettes. We've tried to make those either greatly reduced or free, depending on the cost of the kit and the cost of the supplies. So um, we've tried to make life easier for you. So take advantage of that. Uh, if, you, if you are buying one of those and see if there's a promo, um, photosynthesis and cellular respiration, engineering solutions for global health, which is a Bradford assay that's scaled up. So students don't need micro pipettes for that one. Um, Jeans in a bottle is another good one. It's a good one for at home use because you don't have to worry about anyone else getting their spit on you. For things like PV92, which is our, our uh, one of our PCR kits where students can extract DNA from their own cells, they have two options. Normally they can do it from their cheek cell or they can do it from their hair cells, hair follicles. So um, again, probably not a good idea to be collecting spit in a classroom. So we are including protease in the purchase of a PV92 kit um, so that they can do the hair follicle procedure instead of the spit procedure, the cheek cell procedure. Um, so just little things like that are, we're trying to kind of make things a little bit easier for you to, to fit this, this stuff in. Cause you know, it's like, it's so important for them to be doing hands-on science and it's difficult right now. So, um, if there's any other questions or suggestions you have, I'm happy to hang around here and answer them, or, um, you can shoot me an email either way. I don't have anything else for the rest of the day. So I'm all yours. And, uh, Thank you for coming and listening and, and, and let us know if there's specific things, the other things that we're working on. I saw in the chat, lab data sets, pictures of labs. We'll be putting those into PowerPoint so that you can just pull them out um, as needed. If you guys have sample data sets or pictures of gels or pictures of plates that you don't mind sharing with us, I don't have, you know, I can give you credit or not. It could be totally anonymous. We would love that. Um, you know, I think a lot of us are in the position where we just, I didn't take a lot of pictures of those. I have some, but I don't have a ton. So if you have data sets um, of, you know, Bradford assays that you've done and you've collected data from spectrophotometers or you've done biofuels or, or t glow plates and you wanna share those with us, um, we would love those, especially ones that aren't perfect. Uh, because we all know that it's, you know, good, good practice for students to identify what could have gone wrong or explain why plates look the way that, that, that they do. It might be something unexpected. So we love that stuff. So if you don't mind sharing those with us, um, we'll be happy to um, disseminate those. I think BioLink or, or Innovate Bio is actually trying to get those together as well. And we're trying to help with that, that project. So 
Thank you guys. Lee, thank you so much. Um, I just dropped into the chat the link for the post webinar survey. If you could complete that, it would be so helpful. Um, that's really important to the National Center because we need to collect this data and report it back to the National Science Foundation, which is our funding body. And it also helps us when we look forward to what webinars we're going to do next in our planning and how those are implemented. Um, we are running webinars throughout the fall. This was the first of our fall series. They're going to be on the third Friday of the month. And we have some really great ones coming up. Um, they're going to be posted on the Innovate Bio website and you'll get them pushed out to you through email like you did with this one. Um, going forward, we have actually some faculty members that are going to be talking about different things that they're doing in their programs. So definitely look for those and check them out. Um, I just wanted to, you know, again, thank Lee and the entire team at BioRad. They're just great industry partners for Innovate Bio, and we so appreciate you coming on and doing this webinar for us. Thank you guys. And like I said, I'm happy to answer questions. If you have something about a specific lab or about any of the ones that we talked about, I can show you more. I just don't want to overwhelm you. I know it's a lot. So I have a and question. Feel free to unmute and share your video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, can I ask a question? Absolutely. Um, uh, we use your book uh, for our program, and um, I was wondering if with the addition of the CRISPR kit, are you guys going to put new information in the new book or not? One question, another question, I used your um, uh, PowerPoints in the classroom um, past two, three years, and is there any CRISPR PowerPoint in there that I can use? Yes, so great questions, thank you. Um, regarding the textbook, we do have a little bit about CRISPR in the new version, so version two. I'm not sure which version of the textbook you have. Do you know if you have one or two? Um, I think I have two. Okay, so there's a little bit in there. It does not have our lab because obviously the lab came out after the, that version of the textbook. Um, so we don't have the lab kind of built in like we do some of the other labs. I don't know when the next update is the textbook is. This one's a fairly recent update, so I don't think there's anything in the works just yet. Um, we really worked hard on getting that digital version up and that's been a, a big priority. Um, I don't know, Jeannie, if you're online, if you wanna to speak to the, the, I think she might've popped off. I can find out though. Uh, regarding uh, if the, you can, if you can, yeah. I can get the, your information so I can contact you. We bought the kit. We I'll got it in the chat. To use it and um, COVID, we had closures, so we never used it. We have it in the lab. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. Is it stored? Um, uh, so I should mention that too. But for those of you that are still on. Uh, if you have stuff that you bought in, you know, last semester, as long as it's stored properly, you put the baggie in the fridge or the freezer, it should be fine. Um, I wouldn't worry too much about it. I have stuff that is years old that works great. Um, I'm not the best at always storing my stuff. Sometimes it even lives in the garage for a long time. So, and I live in Texas, it's not, you know, climate controlled. Um, so you're probably going to be fine as long as it's stored right. The only exceptions to that are really C. elegans and the algae bead kit um, because they have you know, organisms. So the, um, as far as the CRISPR PowerPoints go, yes, we do have those online and we also have new videos um, with a third one on the way. So there's one that's an introduction to CRISPR. There's another that is me going through the lab with the PowerPoint. And I believe that PowerPoint is um, on, let, let me just see real quick. I, uh, it, we just put it up this week and I honestly- Can you go to your website and look for them? Yeah, so I was going to look and see if it's in the description here. So, yes, so let me just show you this right quick. Um, and I can link it in the, just, I'll link it in the chat right quick. So it, we do have, I believe, um, so that's the link to the video. And let me do this. And so if you... Right, so if you, if you expand the description and you scroll down, um, you can see the CRISPR res teaching resources down about halfway free CRISPR teaching resources. And I believe the PowerPoint should be on there, the PowerPoint that I'm using in this one, okay? 
And so this is me narrating it. It's going through kind of quickly how to do the lab. The lab itself takes about um, a good hour, a solid hour, I would say. And that's assuming that the students know what they're doing, like that this isn't their first rodeo, you know, that they've done, say, p -Low before or something, um, or that they've at least done bacterial, you know, they know how to handle bacterial colonies and think loops and things like that. So uh, hopefully that kind of helps um, as far as the resources for CRISPR go. The other one is in progress and that's the genotyping extension that came out real, you know, within the last month or so. Um, that they actually take their colonies that they, they um, edited and they can test them with PCR to make sure that they actually edited the gene, right? And so that's a really nice way for them to check not only the phenotype with their plates, but the genotype with PCR. Great, thank you so much. And it would be okay if I ask you a couple of questions. Absolutely, feel email. free to send me an email and yeah, no worries. Because this would be a great, um, we have a project, we do the blue white screening and mm -hmm. then we do the CRISPR right after that. Then I just have a few questions I wanna ask you about that. That's actually great. If you're doing the blue and white screening, I think that's part of the, um, we don't, we don't spend a ton of time talking about blue white screening in the lab. And so if they have that as that background, that's perfect yeah. because then they can yeah. really kind of dive yeah. in. We start with that cloning project, blue white screening. And then I wanted to add the CRISPR at the end. And um, so I'll, I'll shoot you an email and ask you more questions. Thank you. Wonderful, wonderful. Looking forward to it. Lee, there's a question in the chat um, about the digital version of the textbook, and it looks like Yolanda maybe just dropped the link to it. Um, but I know yes. it's hard for you to do. I see that. So, um, Aaron, send me an email, and I'll get you a um, I'll get your trial version if you'd like it. <laughs> so it's really great yes, to have. I do. I, I actually use it all the time. I mean, because it's so much like I can look up stuff, right? Yes, um, I will what, say, I just I don't know where mine is. I have the version too, but it's somewhere well, between my new school and my house. I mean, I've got this right here, but it's yeah. a lot easier for me to just kind of like search for stuff or whatever in there than it is to flip through the pages. I'm just a digital girl, so um, it's really nice. And a lot of schools, of course, are requiring digital or at least having that option. Um, yeah. so that's, that's good. They can, they can actually, we don't sell the digital one. It's sold through vital source, which does a lot of online textbook things. Okay. So, but we can arrange to get you a sample or a trial. It's like a trial. It's a trial okay. version. I will email you then. And then with the digital one, is it like, if we have that copy, is it going to be something that like when a new version comes out, we have to order a new one or will that digital one update with the new update or how does that work? Put that Put that in your email. I need to talk to Taylor about it because I'm not sure and okay. I don't know the answer to that. And I don't know if we've even really thought about it, to be honest. So, okay. um, cause that but, would be nice if it did. And I'd even like, I mean, I would pay to pay more to have a lifetime. So that's the thing. So we do have with that, with that vital source, they let you kind of do like a three month, um, purchase or like a six month or a year or a lifetime. And so I would think if anything, it would be included in that lifetime, but I, I don't know that we've had any discussions around that to be honest, but okay. I do know that there's an option for a lifetime, um, per, a, a lifetime license. Um, but I don't know, I, I, I'm just not sure if that includes like future updates or not, so. Uh, but if you can put that in an email, that's good for Taylor to know too, as he's thinking about version three what people are looking for right so that's the kind of stuff that's always good for us to know yeah, yeah. i'm interested too so i email you about that too great great yeah yeah i can definitely help out with that are there any other resources that would help you guys in your classroom going forward the youtube videos are great i didn't know you had them so i'm gonna link i know you. there's always someone that's like i had no idea this yeah exists. i had no idea i'm gonna link it to my website so students can watch it because we use a lot of your kids so they can just go there and watch it and then that's great i had no clue it's really nice um i found that a lot of teachers just have them do that as like a pre-lab activity and that way they don't get there and they're like what are we doing i have no idea you know it's a little bit easier for them to watch that well, norm, in normal times, it's easier for them to watch a five minute video than to read through a lab protocol. So that may help some of the students that are a little bit resistant <laughs> to doing any kind of pre-lab activities. 
Um, but yeah, how do I get green gloves? Erin, you cannot get gloves at all. You would not believe how the links I went to to get gloves for that video. And I think they're black. Um, which, I have a ton which, of gloves in my closet over here, but I know I'm going to go through them because we're actually meeting in person. Oh my so. gosh. Taylor, ta when I sent him the video, he's like, you look like a, a hooved animal. Like something's <laughs> not right. <laughs> I, got, I got them from Carolina. <laughs> That's where I got yeah. my gloves. <laughs> normally they do have green gloves on Amazon and I can send you the link to the ones we normally buy, but um, they were completely sold out for months because of COVID. Yeah. And so this was the best I could do other than like the weird clear ones that your hands get all sweaty in. Doesn't look good on video either. So yeah. <laughs> yeah we, have, we have blue. I mean, you know, green's just fun. Yeah. Blue green's totally fun. And, and right. that, that same company makes like purple ones and pink. They make all different colors. Um, yeah. Heather just put the link to the survey in the chat one more time. If you ha guys haven't already gotten that. So um, you're welcome if, to. So I don't, I'm going to put this in there. If anybody's done like, or is planning on doing like the, um, jeans in a bottle, I, I have my students in person, but I have an intro class that I took them the supplies so that they could do it while we were on zoom and it worked really well. Um, Oh, nice. Okay. So, so you just put them all in a little Ziploc? Yeah, kind, yeah, and we kind of did like the the home version of it, where you can use some other things that they might have at home. But like, yeah, it worked really well doing that activity on Zoom. So I don't know if you guys have done that yet, but it, it did work. Um, and I'm planning on getting some. I just ordered the um, what's that home one with the candy? Candy capers. Oh, yeah, candy caper. yes. I just ordered that for my three students, and I'm going to take it to them, and then we're going to do it together. Oh, that's perfect. So that candy caper one is really great because it's made for one person. I mean, yeah, it's and perfect. Then if, we're, if we need to do like more gels, I'm just going to then bring them some agarose. Okay, so regarding agarose and gels, um, one thing I did is it depends on your, your trust level with your students, like you know your students, if they can use a microwave and make agarose or not. Um, I would not recommend this for everyone just because some students aren't capable of not burning themselves or whatever, but it, it, it's different for every class. But um, what I've done in the past with teachers is I've given them just a little microtube, a two mil microtube of agarose I weighed out and gave them a 15 mil tube of, um, no, it was a 50 mil tube of, of, of uh, 1XTAE and then they just combined it and microwaved it in, um, what did they use? I think I just had to put it in a measuring cup. And then they just poured it in that little thumbtack box in our STEM kit. And so they poured their own gels in that. The other thing, and I think this is true of that candy capers kit, although I'm not 100% sure. Bryony might know if she's still here. Um, we have those precast gels. They're kind of pricey. They're like eight or nine dollars, maybe 10. Anyway, they have two sets of wells and you can cut those in half and put one half in each of those little stem kits. And so that's a super easy, you know, if you have more money than time sort of thing, which some teachers do. I know most of us don't, but um, most of us have no money and no time. <laughs> I could maybe work, make that work right now. It Especially if you've only got three students. Yeah. I, 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 I thought about pre-pouring them gels and just putting them in a bag. That would work too. Yeah. If you kept them... You'd want to put them cold. in that stem box. Well, not cold, but a little bit, just a little bit of buffer in there in a Ziploc. Oh, it's yeah, mostly yeah. something like a Tupperware so they don't break because they'll just break. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I've if got, you put them in a Tupperware. First, yeah, I got good the first time, like taping everything because my first attempt at tubes like spilled everywhere. So I was like, I got to tape these better. So I went and got some Tupperware containers to like. Oh, man. I the, yeah. I was the science the, fairy driving around my my town. I understand. I understand. Eric asked if the gels contain a stain. Um, we do have some that have ethidium bromide. The ones that we typically use, the ones that have two set of wells, two sets of wells, like one at the top and one in the middle, are, um, they don't contain a stain. They're just 1x TAE, or we have 3% TAE as well that are just one row of wells. Um, we typically, if we're doing a fast stain, we use UV which is a loading dye and stain together. And so you just swap out your loading dye for UV and then you can look at it on a UV transilluminator or a UV light, a UV lamp, like a handheld lamp. Not the little pin light, but the one that's like yay big. Any other questions? But the gels are nice. They're like a luxury item. Like that's what we use in workshops because we don't have a microwave or a hot plate. So they are super nice. Um, 
And it's also nice for students. I found if like, you know, they're, they're perfect, right? Like they're never messed up. So um, it gives them an example of what a gel should look like, like the right width and the right consistency. And so even if they only get it once, they get the luxury item once, then they can kind of like strive to that when they're making their own gels. <laughs> Um, let's see, Yolanda asked about textbooks. I'm just scrolling up. Bye, Erin. All right. Okay, I think we're about done, unless anyone has questions. All right. Well, thank you guys so much for coming, and I hope that was helpful. Um, if you have other ideas that we can help you with, please let us know. Um, we're, we're kind of scratching our heads as well, trying to figure out what would be the best thing for you guys to help you. So we're always happy to get suggestions and uh, get your feedback. So have a great weekend, and I hope you get some rest and rejuvenate yourself. Bye-bye. <laughs> I'll stay on, Heather. <laughs> <laughs>